Barbie small and so petite. Her clothes and figure look so neat. What kind of a girl is the new twist and turn Barbie? Whatever kind of girl you want her to be. Here's a love note for me, Barbie, because you're so beautiful. Math class is tough. That has drawn fire from those who think Barbie's remark reinforces a stereotype about girls and math. Mr. Wexler, I want to talk to you about some. It's not my dream. It's your dream. <laughs> I can't believe she would throw me away. Welcome to the club, Toots. Eventually. The A-listers all embracing the Barbie pink inspired look. Wait. Welcome to Barbie's dream house. It's no secret that in the summer, well, in the Northern Hemisphere where most of you are, we've seen an influx of Barbie trends, Margot Robbie recreations, and a lot of hot pink. Not that I'm complaining, I've been missing pink. Now that everybody's excited for fall, let's have a little bit of a look back. I was watching a Kimberly Foster video, which I really recommend you watch if you're not subscribed to her like other channel other than For Harriet. I'll have it linked down below, fantastic video. But it really got me thinking, like, do you remember my 2000s series which was like pushing back on the romanticization of the 2000s? We've been living through different romanticization periods, right? You had it with Cottage Call and people were actually taking the pandemic that was still in seriously. But now we're in hot pink, tight clothes, influencers are getting skinnier and whiter. And Margot Robbie is a fashion icon before a movie has even been released. But I find this fascinating because Barbie has an incredibly checkered past with feminists, yet we've got a lot of the younger generations flocking toward these looks, and older generations as well. And I don't know about you, but I definitely grew up in the time where femininity was villainized or stupefied. Those were the only two options when it comes to femininity, and it's like, huh, are we evolving beyond this and reclaiming femininity and everything that was looked down on and seeing justice for Sharpay and all the other people that were villains when they're not? Or is this us just regressing into old mindsets because, you know, it's simple escapism and fun? And also, what do people think of Barbie as the brand? Obvious trigger warnings here for ED issues and body issues. I won't be going too heavy into it, but I am referencing studies, and um, there is no escaping it in a world of plastic when it's fantastic. Barbie's history, in brief. So Ruth Handler is actually the mastermind behind this. Even though Mattel, the company, was her husband's, she was the real brains behind everything. What happened was they went on holiday to Switzerland and she saw the Build Lily doll in a shop window. And the Build Lily doll is kind of like a Charlie XCX doll that was given as a novelty gift to troops. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to think about it too much, but that was where the idea came from because she saw the marketing potential for little girls. <laughs> let's not dwell on that too much, let's just move right along. She actually called the doll Barbie after her daughter Barbara, and Barbara was actually the test market for the doll. Barbie has evolved through carefully marketed and curated transformations as a fashion doll over the years. She launched in 1959. Ruth wanted a doll where girls could imagine being anything, as historically at the time dolls for girls centered around motherhood, whereas Barbie didn't. Traditionally feminine and the perfect wife always. I mean, heck, even when Barbie became a computer engineer in 2010, she had to ask a man for help because she couldn't figure it out for herself. But don't worry though, that book no longer exists. Can't imagine why. <laughs> Barbie was a girl boss, independent woman with flavors of the famous Destiny's Child songs, which is still a box. In Ruth's autobiography, my whole philosophy of Barbie was that through the doll, the little girl could be anything she wanted to be. Barbie always represented the fact that a woman has choices. Fantastic! Does she come with a pill? Right from the start, Barbie got a lot of hate from feminists because her body proportions actually <laughs> aren't physically possible. She would be resembling like the grudge coming out of the TV with her movements, basically. <laughs> But also we've got the Disney princesses that fit this exact same mold, so... And also don't forget how racist Barbie was. The first black Barbie actually got released in 1980, along with a Hispanic doll which was also named Barbie. No longer just the token friends, they actually had their own dolls now. Though Barbie couldn't have been racist because she had a black friend named Christy in 1968. Obviously. And um, like, should we just skim over the fact that there was Oriental Barbie that was released in 1981? Uh, read more about it on a blog I found by Kelly Kasoulis. Um, 
Yeah, Barbie has a very racist history. Honestly, it took until 2019 for them to even create a Maori doll for us here in Aotearoa. Like, that's how long it took. 2019. <laughs> But even today, the standard doll that you get with all of the sets is the skinny white Barbie with blonde hair. And any of the others are actually harder to find and cheaper. What kind of messaging does that even send? In 2016, infamously, Barbie got launched with different body types and abilities in order to counteract the backlash against her. But still, even then, the only way you could get an Asian Barbie was to get one of the slimmer models. You couldn't actually get a curvy Asian Barbie because, hey, it's fun to perpetuate stereotypes. Barbie is non-confrontational, commercial, and can conquer anything that capitalism can throw at her. It's the kind of feminism that is palatable to patriarchy because it's not really challenging, and plus, it's pretty. It's presenting to the male gaze, whilst it accomplishes these feats in capitalism, which is basically what it really is. Though actually, Barbie has run for president six times with her first go at it in 1992, wearing an amazing power suit, might I add. It's soft aspirational, white feminism, never rock the boat, non-threatening, and there's never been a protest Barbie. Did they push boundaries? Like, yes, definitely, but with a capitalism lens. Very girl boss, very individualism. Please refer to my Spice Girls video if you want a bit more of a deep dive into this, because I would honestly still say that Spice Girls were more feminist than what Barbie was, because they were actually on the ground, like, coming up against all of the misogyny against women in the 90s which was a lot and constant so yeah i'd still say that they were more feminist even though they've still got their own issues plus just go watch that video because i really like it and not to mention the actual inventors of barbie had to actually stand down from their positions uh, in 1975 due to multiple scandals there's nothing quite as girl boss as being sued barbie corp Reclaiming femininity or fitting into boxes. Barbie core is very pink, very feminine. It adopts the most violent color, in my opinion, which is neon pink. This is the closest thing to neon pink I have, I'm sorry. But seriously, neon pink is so loud and out there, there is no ignoring anybody wearing that color. And I love seeing it, I must say. There's a kind of tailored joy to Barbie core, much in the way of Elle Woods walking into court in her pink dress which is an outfit I still want. It's sexy, it's flirty, it's cinched and it's loud. There is nothing shy and modest about Barbiecore. Barbiecore is ready to go to clubs. Oh my god, we're still in the pandemic. This makes me terrified. People want to party before the end of the world and Barbiecore is the perfect way to be able to do that. Despite the upcoming Barbie movie by Greta Gerwig being the literal poster child, designers were using the hot pink like in Met Gala, Valentino's Fall Winter 2022, it's not just the movie, though I am anticipating that Barbie Core will definitely date and fade away, and I'm very sure that I will be seeing hot pink and neon things turn up in my thrift shops uh, next year. <laughs> the thing is that this is just what trends these days do. It's just that Barbie Core seems to have lasted an entire season as opposed to just a week. People argue that it is a feminist statement and others don't. Barbie Core has been sported by many different people, but Barbie herself is very much still a wasp. Whether Barbie is an astronaut, a scientist, or a homemaker, she's Jane Fonda levels are put together, and so is a Barbie core aesthetic. It requires coordination, time, attention to detail, and poise to pull off. Not to mention a lot of money, and pretty privilege doesn't go far awry either. It's not the frolic in the field look of cottage core where you go picking berries, it is manicured and ready to go to work and make that deal. It feels kind of like the modern version of the 1980s power suit to me. But what about the men? Aren't they loving this? Well, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, who doesn't love a Barbie look? And Barbie definitely caters towards the male gaze. She fits into the mold of what men want, and the body types for these look typically skew young, slim, toned, pale but tanned, and pretty. Not that I want this look to be get kept at all. I've been loving seeing people like Lizzo wear it and rock it. Oh, I've been seeing so many great looks actually worn by people, but it's definitely, um, got a particular waspy vibe to Barbie, shall we say. Again, Kimberly Foster has covered this, so I won't touch on it too much, but it's not very inclusive. A Barbie girl is not a slob. She is polished, manicured, makeup, and cooks and cleans whilst looking amazing. She's kind of a male fantasy in a way, because she can do it all and cater to you. So is us dressing as her endorsing the male gaze mindset? Are we inadvertently placating patriarchy? Or are we able to have all the power now because we're in fourth wave feminism, which is still debated, timelines of feminism, waves is just blah. So now we've got this power, we can dress how we want now, right? So what if it caters to men? 
Again, this kind of loops into my objectification video, which I will be doing a part two on, and I just need to be mentally able to handle that, honestly. Shouldn't women be able to dress how they want? Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, if you've been on my channel at all, you know that I believe that everyone should be able to show up as their authentic selves without threat and without judgment. I think that that is what everyone should be able to do. But we also shouldn't shy away from the fact that Barbie standards are patriarchy approved. Like, there is just no separating that. Recently, Vulgar Drawings actually made this post about like what a man wants on a dating app and it's like, congratulations, you want a child. It's the same thing for Barbie. Literally, the same requirements fit Barbie perfectly. There's no real escape from the male ideal that is Barbie and that's coming from someone that adored Barbie and loves this sort of aesthetic. I fully get it. There's, there's just definite connotations to endorsing this. The studies and the backlash. Barbie's physique is celebrated and also condoned. Now, a lot of the feminist critique on saying that Barbie is a feminist comes back to people saying it shouldn't matter how she looks, It look at all of the things that she's accomplished. It's like, yes, but she has to look this way in order to be able to do that, to be able to sell and get the endorsement of all of these other things and it's, it's still holding up patriarchal standards. Like, that's, that's the problem. Um, it, the way that people look shouldn't matter, but would Barbie have been as successful if she looked like a Cabbage Patch Kid? No. One of the more depressing studies that I read was actually released in 2019. This was dealing with three-year-olds. Little girls, all the age of three, were given four different Barbies. The original, petite, tall, and curvy. To play with, and they had to decide who fit these adjectives. Happy, smart, has friends, pretty, helps others, sad, not smart, has no friends, not pretty, and mean. All of the girls were dressed in the same bikini, so there could be no um, other factors playing here. It literally just comes down to the bodies that they were presented with. And the girls were all separated, and they were given the dolls in random order. So there could be no uh, possible external factors playing here. But the sad thing is, our fat phobic society has already sunk into the minds of these three-year-old children already, which also probably comes down to Barbie contributing to this herself. The girls thought negatively of the curvy doll. Quoting from an article from Psychology Today by Renee Engel, over half selected the curvy Barbie as the one that was not pretty. She was also their top choice for the Barbie who has no friends and the least likely to be selected for adjectives happy, smart and pretty. Only 6% of the girls selected Curvy Barbie as the one that they would like to play with. Notably, when asked why they would not want to play with her, at least 25% of the girls said because Curvy Barbie was fat, chubby, or quote, big. May I remind you, these are three-year-old children. We have a lot of work to do with our fat phobic society and standards for the fact that children that are literally still kind of like toddlers already have this in their brains. What? People have been protesting Barbie for many years and in 2013, the, when the Barbie house was going to be opened in Berlin, topless protesters actually had Barbie tied to a crucifix that was burning outside um, because Barbie objectified women. To quote this article, there's too much emphasis on becoming more beautiful and on being pretty that puts an awful lot of pressure on girls as well as wasting capacities, which could be used to simply be happy or for school. Said Stevie Muriel Schmeidel, uh, a founding member of the Pink Stinks protest group. But for years, the capitalist figure of Barbie has been discussed, judged, idolized, fetishized, and also despised by women in particular and caregivers over concerns of the messages that Barbie gives. Despite having every single career, she's always extremely thin, male gaze catering, and pretty. Though I would still argue that Brat dolls are worse than Barbie, personally, but that's a separate video. <laughs> Using Barbie as a form of protest. Next time I'll sit on you. Barbie has come up against a lot of hate and people have used her to dress like her or use her as an actual figure as a form of protest against patriarchal standards and to call out the many issues with it and also subvert the image of her to use her to say something different. Art Activist Barbie, created by Sarah Williamson, a senior lecturer in education and professional development at the University of Huddersfield, created Art Activist Barbie as a way to get her students to engage in social justice and feminist issues. Things which honestly should go hand in hand, side by side, intersectionality is key for our way forward. And so you get Barbie turning up in art galleries, asking the hard questions, pointing out the male gaze issues, pointing out many issues actually with art galleries, and the lack of female artists actually on display. Could what we're actually seeing now with Barbie core and the embracing of pink as a form of protest for not wanting to hide anymore as women? 
Now, as I said before, neon pink is a violent color. It is there to be seen, it is there to be noticed, it is very loud, it is not to be ignored. It's the color that you highlight textbooks with. It's the color that they use literally in forests for traps because it stands out more than bright yellow does, than neon yellow does. Like, that's it, it's used because it is so immediately eye-catching. There is no ignoring it. It's violently feminine. So could people dressing as Barbie be a way of like subverting these tropes, like what Sarah Williamson actually did with this protest Barbie? And also allowing people to actually question their biases? Could that be what this is as well? So does this mean that mindsets are actually rolling back? Is this legally blonde levels of empowering? Or is this us rolling back to the misogynistic mindsets of the 2000s that are still being romanticized, which keeps on worrying me? Or is this us reverting back to 2014 hashtag boss babe? Or is this us proudly defending femininity and allowing people to actually express themselves and no longer be afraid of this? Or is this just escapism and wanting to have fun? Well, I mean, multiple things can be true at the same time, right? Though the cynical part of my brain is just sort of hooking onto the fact that this is most likely just a huge distraction from like the dystopia that we're definitely facing and all of the catastrophes of the world, so that's why people are really gravitating towards this party like the world's ending sort of mentality that kind of goes hand in hand very well with Barbie core. We did have the escapism with cottage core, but at least people were learning skills with that. Like they were actually learning how to cook, they were learning how to plant food, they were learning all sorts of things and there was less pressure on being perfectly put together all the time and hustle culture. It's a bit like Barbie core is an endorsement of capitalism to me, but that could just be my interpretation of it because it is so powerful. The Barbie movie, which we are yet to still see. So we all know the other Barbie movies, some are actually really good. I spent the whole time practicing this. And we've seen people like Curtis Connor actually react to them, which are hilarious videos if you ever need to pick me up. But this one with Margot Robbie is meant to be something that we're not expecting at all. Whether it's a brightly coloured dystopia, they become self-aware like in a goofy movie and disappear, objectification may be analysed by humanising these beautiful people. Like we just don't know what to expect other than what we've actually seen. I don't know what's going to be happening. I'm very excited for the movie though because Margot Robbie I think is a fantastic actress. She likes to take on roles that she can really get into and explore some things which are quite frankly unlikable like in I, Tonya or just misunderstood in a lot of ways and so I'm really excited to see what she does even though like Margot Robbie is always seen as just being the hot one um, but yeah I'm very excited to see it. So moving on to my final thoughts, I'm actually keen to hear what you think of this because now everyone is in the pumpkin spice sort of world, I've been seeing it everywhere, everyone's very excited for Halloween. Um, now we can kind of look back on it, what do you think? And what do you think after I've like analysed and plucked apart every single seam in this, in this video? Do you think that our views on Barbie have shifted in particular over these last couple of years and with the help of what this movie is coming out with and not only that but with the fashion movement? I know that with the Barbie movies that were coming out in the 2000s they have a particular nostalgic power over the Gen Z generation, I fully get that, and also now alphas that are coming up. But because Barbie has been such a polarizing figure, it's just been really interesting to see it being embraced in this way now. Even if you didn't own a Barbie doll, you know of Barbie. You know of the expectations of Barbie, you know what Barbie signifies and what Barbie means. So what do you think? Do you think that we should be accepting Barbie as our one true leader? Are our standards for where we want feminism to go really that low? Or is the scope that Barbie covers still too narrow? I was reading a very funny uh, skit that was actually written, I forget, I think it was by NPR. Uh, where Barbie was actually debating with her uh, team about becoming president and the fact that she's not allowed to take a stance on anything and that's that's sort of what Barbie signifies to me it's like silenced empowerment empowerment visually but nothing else you know nothing materially moving forward though Though I do understand, like, in a capitalism view, she is definitely a very good feminist role model for being able to create great work of ease. 
definitely. And I'm never going to discourage people from wanting to follow their dreams. Like, we're all living in capitalism. We all have to succeed in order to be able to survive. It's just the way of the world. Hey, everyone needs money to live, right? Aesthetically, you know that I love this look big time. This is me all over. I still also believe that we shouldn't break people down to, like, just how they look. But everything also hinges on how Barbie looks. <laughs> and so you see this double-edged sword I'm walking on here. So again, that's why I really want to hear your comments down below. I'm very interested in this conversation. Because the thing is that you can still be subverting expectations whilst looking a particular way because the way you look, despite what people like Catherine Hepburn said, that it matters with how you're perceived by people. It's like... Well, yeah, that matters, but people should also be listening to, like, what's coming out of your mouth and what's actually in your heart as opposed to just what they see. Despite what we're being trained to do with our phones these days, <laughs> with our short attention spans, and if you don't like the way that someone looks or if it doesn't align with your morals and you're not going to listen to them, I'm still convinced that that's the reason that I get so many sexist comments on my videos. I just block and delete straight away because I do present a certain way. And I don't really care. <laughs> I like looking the way that I look, so I'm not really going to Change it. But yes, thank you so much for watching this. Um, if you did grow up with the Barbie, if you made it all the way to the end, what was your favourite Barbie? I didn't really have many of them, but there was one Barbie that I really wanted for Christmas. It was the mermaid one. I was so excited to get this Barbie. It was ridiculous. I still remember it because she had this gold tail. Um, so that was my Barbie um, because uh, Ariel, favourite Disney princess, and then Barbie is a mermaid. Uh, two worlds colliding, hell yes, especially for what I was like eight? Nine? So I will be seeing you for the Grace and Frankie video. I just had to come up with this one first because it was actually eating away at my brain if I didn't make this video because I already started googling stuff and it's like, oh no, this has to be a video now. So there we go. So yes, next time it will be Grace and Frankie. Uh, looking at all those ages and fun things because the show's interesting. Anyway, we'll talk about it then. I'll see you next time. Bye! We've seen an influx of Barbie trends with Margot Robbie recreations, Barbie core, the cat using the litter tray. Are they all gone? Uh, is, is, there, is everybody gone? <laughs> huh? Good. Oh my gosh, my cheeks are killing me. I can't keep smiling like this anymore. I am exhausted. I think I need a break. <laughs> a little break? Okay.